this period. Brought to you by Toyota. The 2013s must go to make room for the 2014s. On now at your Toyota dealer. St. Paul, the first stop. The three-game road trip for the Canucks. Uh, very Christmassy in St. Paul these days, and it's not just the wild sweaters. And don't forget to play Safeway's million-dollar score and win. If any Vancouver player scores five goals in tonight's game, Edith Mills of Chilliwack could win $1 million. Shop and swipe your club card, and you could be our next lucky winner. Canucks riding a seven-game win streak. Like to make it eight in a building where historically they haven't always played that great. Guys, we'll call it again. John Shorthouse, John Garrett. That's very true, Dan. The Canucks have lost seven of the last ten visits here in Minnesota, being outscored 36-22 in those games. Let's check out the starting goaltenders for this one, brought to you by Tim Hortons, official coffee of the NHL. Roberto Luongo's next win will be his 250th as a Canuck. He'll try to get it in this building that hasn't been kind to him. His first start in Minnesota in more than three years. Like Luongo, Josh Harding is tied for the NHL lead with three shutouts, but nobody can touch him in goals against average. He leads the way at 1.49. Scoring goals has been the problem for the Minnesota Wild. They only have seven in their last five games. And we're set to go with ex Canuck Matt Cook lining up to start this game on left wing. 566 games he played with Vancouver. And now a member of a team that used to despise him. An early whistle as Harding covers up. And Matt Cook's done well against the Canucks since being traded away, John. He's got four points in four games. Well, Matt Cook is penalty minutes this year. He only has 20 penalty minutes in 35 games. And uh, the league likes to use him as a poster boy for the turnaround that can happen in a player who's been suspended so many times. Cook up with the puck off the face off in the Minnesota zone. Plays it to Brett Ballmer at center. Tips the puck into Vancouver territory. Now throws a hit on Jason Garrison. Ryan Kessler back for the puck. Ballmer picks it off on the right wing. Kessler again checked by Cook. Garrison one hands the puck behind the net. That's cut off by Kyle Brodziak. Brodziak to the blue line and Marco Scandella missed the puck and it slides all the way down into the Minnesota zone. Jarrett Spurgeon with the puck behind the Minnesota goal. Sedin line out with Yannick Hansen. Dan Ham used Chris Tanev on defense for Vancouver. Up against Koivu, Parisi, and Charlie Coyle, who makes a nice pass to Koivu. He centers Parisi, stopped by the left pad of Luongo. Coming to his left, and Parisi did well to get the shot away. It looked like he picked that puck in the midair. So an early save for Roberto Luongo. Could bode well. As we all discuss the numbers that Luongo has put up in this building. Hendrick Sedin's pass at center, intercepted by Zach Parisi, who tips the puck in behind the Canuck goal. Luongo out, leaves for Hanhus. Tanev takes his pass, and Chris Tanev bangs the puck ahead, intended for David Booth, taken away by the Wild, and here's Ryan Suter. Gets a return pass from Jonas Brodeen, and now throws one forward, blocked by Kevin Bieksu, who played that one aggressively. Halla dumps the puck in for the Wild, and out with it is Ryan Stanton. His pass picked off, Eric Halla. Passes in behind the goal. Nino Niederreiter there. Couldn't come up with the puck. Cassian had it for Vancouver, but the Canucks failed to clear. Puck deflects to Niederreiter. Now a sharp angle shot by Jason Pominville is kicked out by the left paddle of Wongo. Booth steals the puck outside the Minnesota blue line. He's hit by Niederreiter as he dumps it in behind the wild goal. Here's Clayton Stoner. The Port McNeil, BC native, starting out with the puck. Pass ahead for Zenon Kanopka, picked off by Bieksa, and he passes over to Jason Garrison. Zach Dolpe, back for Bieksa, who leaves for Dolpe, and he passes to Jason Garrison, who finds Kevin Bieksa. Bieksa ahead to Dolpe, and on the defense with a wrist shot, and the glove saved by Harding, his first test, he was able to knock it down. Danny Heatley at center. Drop pass for Kanopka, had his stick lifted by Dolpe. Following in is Tori Mitchell, but Minnesota offside as Kanopka was trapped inside the blue line. Nothing like making that first save, and it is a beauty for Roberto Luongo. Koivu across to Parisi, off the heel of his stick, doesn't get a whole lot of it, but Roberto, right to left, gets the pad down to make the save and get into this one real early. There you see why there's been so much chatter about Luongo starting this game. John Tortorella not one for caring about the history books too much. No. What's done is done. 
Time to exorcise the demons, as he said this morning. Here's Charlie Coyle with the puck at center. Turning to get away from Henrik Sedin. Parisi tried to return the puck. Canucks dump it the other way. Yannick Hansen with a step on the right wing. Hansen fakes the shot, now turns. Drops back to Tanev. In deep for Daniel Sedin. Koivu took the puck from him, cleared to the blue line. Tanev holds it in. Left point, Hanhuis. Wrists one in front, that deflects to the corner. Suter goes after the puck. Hansen ties him up. Ryan Suter able to play it ahead while falling down, and the puck's out to neutral ice. Three and a half minutes gone, scoreless first period. Dan Hanhuis sends the puck back in from center. And it comes all the way around to the near side. Suter one hands it out. Picking it off is Hanhuis, and he dumps the puck back into the Minnesota zone. Kessler in after it. Harding comes out to play the puck to the side. And Scandella feeds it ahead. Here comes Brett Bowman. In over the back of the line of the right wing. Drop pass for Cook. His return feed intercepted by Garrison, who sends one ahead to Higgins. He finds Santarelli with speed. Right side pass. Kessler shoots. And another glove saved by Harding, who did the splits and got his right hand up to knock that puck away. Garrison wrists one in front. That's intercepted by Cook. And he's able to slide the puck to center to Brodziak, who jumps into the Vancouver zone. Just over four minutes elapsed. Battle for the puck at center. And Eric Hulla comes up with it. He's in on the left wing. Wide on Yannick Weber. Wrist shot well wide. And that ricochets off the corner boards and all the way down into the Minnesota zone. Niederreiter under pressure from... Richardson, Stoner, stumbled at center, loses the puck to Cassian who slides it forward, here's David Booth in, down the right side, Booth, wrist shot, stopped by Harding, and he's able to fall on the loose puck, as Booth's shot appeared to handcuff Josh Harding a bit, but he made the save. A little trouble with the rebound control on the shot by David Booth, Ryan Kessler, a good hard shot, high glove side, Josh Harding, quick hand, like that one to the corner, and then this one's off the blocker. Josh Harding got hit in the throat this morning in the pregame skate and it went down heavily off to the dressing room for about 10 minutes and then came back. You and I were speculating that he wouldn't come back. It was the rookie Eric Halla who caught him with a puck in the throat area. But good to go and he's 13-1 and in this building this season so you know he didn't want to skip a start. Here's Charlie Coyle flipping the puck in from center now chasing after it in the corner. Try to get it behind the net for Parisi. That's taken away. Played to the blue line, held in by Suter. He wrists one wide. Puck deflects to the far side. And Hanhuis there. Sends one to center to Henrik Sedin. Henrik carries it on the right wing. Henrik Sedin throws one wide of the goal. Puck comes to Hanhuis on the left wing. Dan Hanhuis towards the net. Gloved by Harding. And he'll take another whistle. Last complete game here in Minnesota. It was March 31st, 2009. Last time they went the distance in that game, the Canucks uh, did win. Uh, beat the Wild 2 1 in OT. Dan Murphy is uh, 50 followers away from 50,000 on anti social media. <laughs> yes. I'll give them some of mine. I'll give, I'll give them 50 of my naysayers. Matt Cook on the four check. Jason Garrison takes the puck away. Ahead for Kessler, but it bounced over his stick. Five and a half minutes in. No score. Garrison back for a loose puck. Can't get it by Brodziak. Kessler moves to check the Minnesota forward. Chris Higgins after the puck. Cook holds it in. Bulmer behind the net. Two Canucks on him. And the puck knocked free to Mike Santarelli, who turns inside his blue line. He's able to get the puck out, but not through center. Santarelli keeps after the puck for Vancouver. Cook gets it, flips it in wide of the Canuck goal. That's the stick of Yannick Weber, who's gone to the bench on a change. As Garrison slides one forward to Santarelli. And he'll head to the bench after dumping the puck into the Minnesota zone. Danny Heatley checked by Tom Sestito, who's back in the Vancouver lineup. Here's Dalpy cutting it on goal, and he fired wide, trying to go high short side. Sestito. Holds the puck in the zone. He returns to the lineup, replacing Jeremy Welsh on this Canucks fourth line. And Danny Heatley is on the Minnesota Wild fourth line. Here's Kanopkin on the left wing. Tips the puck to the end boards. Now throws a hit on Stanton. Bieksa there to send the puck around to Dale Weiss. 
Long pass ahead is a good one. Sestito tips the puck to the corner and moves in on Keith Ballard. Gives him a light bump. Clayton Stoner work, starts out with the puck. Ahead to Hulla. And with one hand on the stick, Dan Hamhuis able to break that up. Puck goes out of play at the Vancouver bench. We'll take a break. Just about seven minutes in, no score in St. Paul. It's time. Enter the Freedom 55 Future Stars contest and your minor hockey team could skate with the Canucks. The winning team will join the Canucks on ice at Rogers Arena during the Super Skills event and will showcase their skills and challenges such as the fastest skater and hardest shot. Visit Canucks.com slash Freedom 55 contest to enter to win a prize of a lifetime. Think anybody will crack that 100 mile an hour shot? Uh, Garrison could. Edler probably could Edler. if he's able to. I heard a rumor that uh, you've been recruited again. Yes, yes, they've asked me again. Matt Cook just broke the stick of Yannick Weber. Third stick in his last couple of shifts for Weber. Grabs a new one of the bench as the Canucks work to hold the puck in the Minnesota zone. Weber. Elected to retreat, and here comes the other number six, Marco Scandella down the right side. Scandella puts one in front, knocked away by the Canucks. Scandella now passes behind the net to Cook. Matt Cook throws one to the crease, knocked away by Luongo. And out with the puck is Mike Santarelli. Ahead to Higgins. Wrist shot over top of the goal. And the Canucks have been shooting high so far, it appears, on Josh Harding. Bulmer around Hamies, who had to let him go, or it would have been an interference call. Checked by Tanev behind the goal. Ham Hughes passes hard to the side. Higgins couldn't move the puck out. Now Ham Hughes feeds to an open wing at center. And Ryan Suter takes control for Minnesota. Charlie Coyle takes his pass and plays the puck into the Canucks zone. Eight minutes into the first, no score. And there's a pass out of the reach of Henrik Sedin. Suter goes back for the puck with Henrik in pursuit. Daniel closes the gap as well. Suter able to punch the puck away with his left hand. Here's Tanev. Long wrist shot blocked. Koivu flips one forward. Parisi gives chase. Luongo out of his net. Clears the puck to the corner. And Tanev's able to chop it free for Yannick Hansen, who can't move it out along the near boards. Zach Parisi in for Miko Koivu. Making moves on nobody in particular. There was no Canuck there. But it was fancy. Yes, he, he thought that Chris Tanev was going to chase him to the corner. Here's Henrik Sedin, Canucks are three on two, Daniel Sedin across, Hansen scores! Yannick Hansen on the three on two, wrists it in, stick side, and the Canucks lead one nothing. There was a little chemistry, looking for somebody to play with the Sedins. All three forwards involved in this, scoring on the rush, and Yannick Hansen putting himself in position to get this shot. Yannick Hansen, lead the play, you're a right-hand shot, get in position for the shot. Henrik to Daniel, to Yannick, he's got room, he's a right-hand shot on the left side, got some time and space, and beats Josh Harding stick side. It is a beautiful pass by Daniel Sedin to Yannick Hansen, who makes no mistake. He's got goals in three of his last four games, Yannick Hansen, up to six on the season. No sinker on that one. Eighth straight game, the Canucks were scored first. Now there's a penalty coming up as David Booth was taken down. Referee waited a few beats before blowing the whistle, but it's Keith Ballard headed to the box, and the Canucks fresh off opening the scoring get a power play on a slashing call. Keith Ballard on David Booth. I thought it might have been tripping. He chopped at Booth as the puck went by, missed the puck, caught Booth, and ends up in the penalty box. So the Canucks get a power play 10 seconds after they open the score. And the power play, which has really come to life, gets an opportunity here. Three for four of the last two games. Scored in nine of the last 11 games. The Canucks are up over 16% on the season. 21st in the NHL, which doesn't sound too great, but when you consider where they came from, it's a big reason they've won seven in a row. Canucks set up. Ham Houston to Garrison. Shoot! Stopped by Harding. And he's able to grab the rebound, which was laying in the skates of Ryan Kessler. Canucks power play brought to you by Subway. Escape the cold with the new Sriracha steak melt. Subway. Eat fresh. Well, one of the reasons the power play is doing so well is Jason Garrison on the point. There was a good shot. 
Josh Harding able to control the rebound through the screen of Ryan Kessler. Kessler on the faceoff against Koivu. Puck at the linesman skate, Mark Wheeler, as Kessler tried to get it back. Now Daniel City one hands it in front, and that's alertly grabbed by Harding, who gets the whistle. Well, Mark Wheeler's headed to Sochi, and it gets all tangled up on this faceoff. Kessler could have won the draw, but he gets into the skates of Mark Wheeler, and Daniel almost turned it into a goal. Here's Daniel Sedin after the puck behind the goal. Pass to Henrik. Back to Ham Hughes. Hard pass to Henrik Sedin. He finds Daniel Sedin back to Ham Hughes. Fakes the shot. Here's Henrik on the left side. Garrison moves back to the blue line. Pass intended for him. He had to glove it down as it was deflected. Now he's under pressure and coughs the puck up, driven down the ice by Matt Cook. A minute to go on the Van uh, Vancouver power play. As Henrik Sedin takes the drop pass from Ham Hughes. That pass was deflected, putting Kessler offside. So the whistle blows with 51 seconds remaining in the minor penalty to keep Ballard. And the second unit climbs over the boards. Just that shot by Jason Garrison very early in the power play for the first unit, their only chance. Santorelli, Hansen, and Higgins up front with Bieksa and Weber on the points. Bieksa's pass intercepted. Here's Brodziak shorthanded. Slap shot, gloved by Luongo. And he'll hang on for a face-off in the Vancouver zone with 41 seconds to go in the Canuck power play. A little bit of a knuckler. Roberto had some problems with it. That's a little bit of a knuckler compared to what we saw in the weekend. Yes. You can see, uh, there it is, fluttering by. It jumped up just as Brodziak went to take that shot. Here's a penalty coming up to Chris Higgins as he got his stick into the feet of Kyle Brodziak. Let go of the stick immediately to try to get out of the call. But the goaltender Harding to the bench. Minnesota gets a fifth skater out there. And when the Canucks get the puck, as they do now, the whistle blows for the penalty to Higgins. They'll play four on four for 22 seconds, and then the Wild go to the power play. Hey, Gunner, better number 20, two minutes tripping. Well, right from the faceoff, Mike Santorelli loses the draw. Chris Higgins tried to chip it by, and his, his stick gets caught. Rodziak goes down, and Chris Higgins is in the penalty box. Higgins tripping at 35. Kessler comes out with the four on four. Canucks manage just the one shot John described from Garrison on their power play. Chris Tanev gets the puck off the faceoff. And he starts out for the Canucks with a pass to Ham Hughes. Lead feed for Kessler and hit the referee, therefore negating the icing. Wild control in their own zone. Ballard standing at the penalty box. And here he comes. So Minnesota onto the power play. One for 11 in the last five games. Hold on. Spurgeon shoots the puck around to the near side. Parisi's there. Into the corner, Koivu. Along the end boards, here's Jason Palmanville with a blue line feed to Spurgeon. Other side for Suter. Pressured by Daniel Sedin. Hanhuis gets the puck behind the net. Wastes no time clearing it all the way down into Minnesota territory. The next penalty killing has... Been absolutely perfect in 10 of the last 11 games. Very aggressive in the neutral zone. 90.2% Canucks leading the NHL by nearly 3% over Pittsburgh. Here's a centering pass, comes to Suter. Shot blocked by Kessler. Koivu to the side, they score! Zach Parisi with the rare power play goal against the Canucks, and the game's tied at one. Well, that's a problem when you block shots, you take yourself out of the play and you take the chance that the rebound might get back to the opposition. Ryan Kessler with the block shot. Has another block shot and now he's out of position. He's down and that leaves Parisi wide open. Jason Garrison can't go to him, has to stay in front. And Parisi, left hand shot, gives himself an angle. Score! 
Parisi from Koivu and Suter on the power play. And that ends a run of 21 consecutive kills for the Canucks. Got a fight at center, Kanaka and Weiss. Kanaka left hand free, Weiss trying the rights. We weren't sure Kanaka would be able to fight tonight. We saw him taping some of his fingers together at practice this morning. But that's not there now. And one last right hand over the top. And those two will take a break, as will we, with 8.05 to go in the first. This tight game tied at one. For the first time ever, the Canucks will be a part of the Heritage Classic. Ottawa versus Vancouver, March 2nd. BC Place tickets go on sale December 5th. On sale now. Heritage jerseys can be purchased now at select retail outlets. Christmas coming up, Shorty. I know your Heritage tickets would be a nice gift. Zenit Kanopka's in the penalty box with the ice on his hand. And you can see Dale Weiss and Kanopka, willing participants right away. They're quick left by Kanopka catching Dale on the chin. Kanopka, Minnesota, 5 for fighting, 11.55. Teams remain at full strength. Game tied at 1. Eight minutes to go in the first period, and here's David Booth over the Minnesota line. Puck knocked away from him. Tory Mitchell has it at center. Cross to Eric Hulla. Plays the puck around. Heatley for Minnesota. Missed the puck. Comes back to Spurgeon, who drives one wide. Luong with the goal stick. Batted out of the air. Puck is loose, and I think it was knocked with a high stick of Luongo, so the Canucks next to touch, and the whistle blows. Well, I think it's a Minnesota high stick, John. Oh, Pointing outside yeah, that makes for the faceoff outside. Luongo initially made contact. And here it's off the boards. So Roberto makes contact. There's the high stick. It's there knocked down, and the Wilder next to touch. There's a the high stick. Yep. Correct again, King Friday. Yes, thank you. We are a long way away. <laughs> Yannick Weber dumps one ahead. Mike Santarelli is after the puck. Koivu forces it into the Vancouver zone. Luongo will leave back to the crease for Hamhuis to play the puck. Brodine holds it in. Weber ahead for Higgins. Back for Weber, who's able to get the puck out. But Coyle brings it right back into Vancouver territory. Pass blocked by Higgins, and here comes Ryan Kessler. Higgins taken down, trying to join the rush. Kessler with a hard shot, knocked down by Harding. And he's able to cover the puck for the whistle. Canucks open the scoring in this hockey game. Yannick Hansen sixth, briefly gave Vancouver the lead. It also produced a winner on score and win for Safeway and Christy Crackers. Andrew Paul of Cobble Hill, you've won a Bradley original electric smoker. Uh, here's the pass, Daniel Sedin to Yannick Hansen. Just inside the post blocker side. Ryan Kessler does a nice job, cuts across the middle, lets the wrist shot go, and Mike Santarelli going hard, couldn't get to that rebound. Henrik Sedin fell down. Stanton able to keep the play alive behind the net for Hansen. Checked by Suter, but taps the puck over for Bieksa, who's going to get a slashing penalty as he chopped the stick out of the hands of Matt Cook. And Kevin Bieksa heads to the penalty box. John Tortorella doesn't like this call. I've seen a few times lately where, uh, and Matt Cook's got one hand, a pretty good chop by Kevin Bieksa. I don't think that there's really a legit complaint there. That's a slash. But I've seen it lately where if the guy's got one hand on the stick, the refs let it go. And say, well, it's your responsibility to hang on to the stick a little tighter. I think that's what Kevin just said, among other things. Wild one for one on the power play. Koivu. Now a centering pass for Parisi gets by him. Just holding the puck on side is Jared Spurgeon. Pominville off the post. Might have caught Luongo in the shoulder. Jason Pominville wasted no time letting that shot go, and he came close. Hamhew steals the puck. Can't clear past Ryan Suter. His pass to Flex in front. Ham Hughes knocks it down and dumps the puck down into the Minnesota end. Jason Pominville, a goal post away. He was close to giving Minnesota its first lead. Parisi back in on the left side, drops to Suter. 
Spurgeon in front, Pominville feeds to the corner. Now gets a return pass from Koivu. Spurgeon to the left point to Suter. That one's out of the reach of Koivu. Stants it onto the puck quickly, and he risks it all the way down on Harding. Just under a minute to go in the minor penalty to Kevin Bieksa. A little under six minutes remaining. First period, game tied at one. Nino Niederreiter dumps the puck into the Vancouver zone. Tanev takes a look, gets it by Heatley, but not Ballard. Keith Ballard fires to the right point. Gets a return pass. Ballard wrists one in front no longer the save. Tanev gets the rebound and slides it past his old defense partner, Keith Ballard, and down the ice. Here's a quick up. Heatley's got a step on the left wing. Heatley shoots wide on the short side. Canucks slow on the change, and Heatley trying to take advantage. Now he's got the puck again. Blue line feed, Brodeen down for Danny Heatley. Ten seconds to go on the power play. Centering pass, thrown to the crease, knocked away by the Canucks. Heatley turns, shoots, and it trickles through to Luongo, covers up. Pinballing puck in front of the Vancouver goal, but Luongo holds it out. Roberto Luongo doing a good job strong as Niederreiter tried to push him back into the net. Shot by Palmer. I think it did graze Roberto. He got across quickly, left to right. Might have gone off his arm. And can you have to watch when you've got a good puck handling goalie like Josh Harding? You have to pay attention. And there was the quick up to Danny Heatley, and he fired it wide. Dying seconds of the power play. Wild control. Brodeen in behind the net. Penalty's over, but the Wilds still have the puck. They managed two shots on that power play. Luongo grabs and gets the whistle. And he'll get a little rest here as we step aside in a 1-1 hockey game. There's John Tortorello who had a much talked about timeout Saturday night versus Boston. Said he was kicking himself because he was going to uh, call it before the Bruins score. And he says he doesn't even know what effect it had because the Bruins had a scoring chance right after the timeout. We know this. I asked Adele Weiss if he had been mic'd up, how many words would have had to been bleeped out? And Weiss said you probably would have only had about three that weren't bleeped out. And Roberto Luongo said he took a little skate by the bench, but didn't look that pleasant, so he took off. <laughs> the start of the second period wasn't going the way John Tartarella thought it should be going. This one's tied at one with four and a half minutes to go in the first, and an icing call upcoming as Stoner is ahead of Cassian on that skate down the ice. Now here's one, John, where Keith Ballard, all he had to do was turn sideways on that one. And yeah. it's called icing. Uh, okay, the puck's on the board. Now watch Keith Ballard here. All he has to do is turn towards the puck, and he's got it. But instead, just let it go, and then we'll start with a face-up. You're not going to keep, that's not going to be on your coach's challenge list, is it? <laughs> no, no, that's not on the challenge list. But that's just the responsibility. I wish the linesman would uh, make that decision and make that call. Zach Cassian into the middle. Gets a return feed from Ryan Stanton. Carries in on the right wing with a wrist shot. Stick save Harding. Niederreiter gets the loose puck. Clears it past David Booth, but not Brad Richardson. Over to Cassian. Drops to Bieksa. Bieksa takes a look and wrists one wide of the goal. Bouncing puck at the side. Richardson tried to come up with it. Swatted down the ice by Spurgeon. And it's an icing call the other way. Once BX gets to the hash marks. Uh, this is a little longer shift than the Wild have been out there in their own zone. Chasing. Hullo needs a new stick. Referee saying, forget it. Get back. Yes, the old <laughs> new stick trick. He settles in for the face-off against Henrik Sedin. They tie each other up. Daniel Sedin winds up with the puck. Throws one on goal, trying to catch Harding by surprise, and the goaltender was able to glove the puck. What? And now the Minnesota Wild get to make a change. I don't like that play. Oh, because they got I mean, you've got, you've got the guys tired, and you're just going to throw it at the goalie and uh, let him get a whistle, and you know the goalie's going to freeze it. The Sedins are being asked to shoot the puck to a lot more. The puck more, I know. And maybe that's part of it, is Daniel. Rather than feeding behind the net to Yannick Hansen, threw it on goal. Here's Han Hughes carrying in deep off the draw. Puts one in front, Hansen after it. Now a backhander, Harding looked behind him. But the puck trickled wide on the far side after the save on Henrik Sedin. Close call there for the Canuck captain. 
who had a goal and an assist in the win over Boston on Saturday. Bulmer to the Vancouver Blue Line. Gets to the corner with the puck. Hamu's trying to stay with him. Matt Cook is there for Minnesota, and he's out with the puck from the corner. Intercepting is Yannick Hansen. And Hansen moves through center, two on two with Daniel Sedin, just offside. Close play at the blue line, and the whistle blows. Just over three minutes to go in the opening period. Bomer and Henrik Sedin having a little conversation. Bomer's a big kid, six foot four. Henrik has a backhand that goes through a maze of players, and Josh Harding has to go off his arm, but has no idea where it is. Off his arm, off his side, and just trickles wide. Josh Harding, as we said, 13 and one here, and it has only allowed 17 goals in this building. Dale Weiss and Senate Kanaka exiting the penalty box, and that's why Josh Harding has to wait a little bit longer before the drop of the puck. Has Josh Harding played himself into the Olympic mix? Or his body of work isn't extensive enough to be considered. He's been absolutely great this season. That he has. I always leave these questions to be answered by you. Yes. Because you are the expert uh, on the position. Yes, uh, and I think he has played himself into consideration. Just under three minutes to go. First period, Canucks open the scoring. Yannick Hansen, lead lasted three minutes before Zach Parisi tied on the power play. Now Parisi in front, couldn't get a backhander away. As he whacked towards the puck, but couldn't make contact. There you go. Ballard didn't turn at that one, John, and the no. official waved it off. Now a his stick was slashed. Canucks got away with it. Kessler stopped by Harding, who came charging out to challenge. Ballard had his stick slashed right out of his hands there, and it resulted in a scoring chance for the Canucks. Stick was broken. Here's Suter leading the rush. Passes on to the right side. Palmenville tried to get it in front. That was blocked. And Bieksa lifts the puck high to his own blue line. Wild bring it back in. Palmenville turning on Ryan Stanton. Who knocks the puck away. Wild retake control. Niederreiter behind the net for Palmenville. Pass for Niederreiter picked off by Tom Sestito. And Sestito plays the puck off the boards. And it's forced out to center by Zach Delpy. Jonas Brodin crossed to Suter against the puck to center. Palmenil throws it forward. Hulling on the left wing with a wrist shot blocked by Yannick Weber. And Stanton picks up the loose puck for Vancouver. Dale Weiss giving chase inside the Minnesota blue line. Knocked away from him. Here's Cook in with a drop pass. Balmer puts one in front. And Luongo reacting late. Just got a piece of it with a left pad. Either the puck changed direction or Luongo... Didn't see it to the last instant. Garrison out to center. Henrik Sedin. Final minute of play in the first period. One minute. Henrik backhands the puck out of play from center. And so the whistle blows for a face-off in the neutral zone. Well, Keith Ballard is out by his own blue line. Circling Chris Hagens, one hand on the stick, and then chopped it and broke the stick in half. And that creates the chance for Ryan Kessler with the stick chop final minute first period the face off will be right at center and Hendrick City wins the draw Han Hughes drives the puck into the Minnesota zone Hendrick after it in the corner pass behind the net knocked away Suter's got Henrik Sedin tied up. Daniel comes in looking for the puck. Koivu's there as well for Minnesota. And Brodeen is on to it on the far side. Hansen gives him a bump. Charlie Coyle can't get the puck out. Hansen has it. His pass blocked. Koivu trying to move the puck out. Canucks get it to the blue line. Chris Tanev. Daniel Sedin to Henrik Sedin. Curling towards the front. Wrist one. Hansen trying to deflect it. Hamhues towards the goal. Stopped by Harding. Good late pressure by the Canucks. 15 seconds to go in the period. And the puck skated to center and thrown ahead to Koivu. He finds Parisi down for Miko Koivu. Drop pass, one-timer Scandella stopped by Loongo. As Marco Scandella got every ounce into that one.
The 2013s must go to make room for the 2014s. On now at your Toyota dealer. Koivu and Parisi create some space for Scandella. Time running out, 4.5 seconds. Let's it go. Parisi can't make contact with Roberto Luongo. No rebound. Face off win, Minnesota. Late shot attempt by Scandella is blocked, and that'll do it. For period number one, we'll hear from the goal scorer, Yannick Hansen, in a few moments with Murph. He made it 1-0 at 846, but 1146 Zach Parisi tied the game for Minnesota. Roberto Luongo faced nine Minnesota shots. Canucks fired 12 at Josh Harding. As mentioned, we'll hear from Yannick Hansen with Murph in just a sec, but first we'll send it to the guys who will carry us through the intermission. With Gary Vault, here's Don Taylor. Welcome back to St. Paul Canucks in Wild through one period of play. Let's take a look at the first period scoring summary brought to you by Future Shop for the season's hottest gadgets. At the best price guaranteed, head to futureshop.ca. Seasons gadgets from Future Shop. Hansen opened the scoring with his sixth. Three minutes later, Zach Parisi on the power play tied it up for Minnesota. As we've mentioned, the Canucks have won seven straight, going for eight straight, and guys, Ryan Kessler was a key figure the last time that happened. Well, that was back January of 2011, the Stanley Cup final year. Ryan Kessler against the Oilers. John, a couple of goals. Or pardon me, a hat trick. Hat trick. Nikolai Habibulin, the goaltender for the Oilers in this one, the tip-in, two tip-ins in that hat trick. Kessler had 741 of ice time. He had three shots on goal in that first period and won seven of his 12 face-offs. And I think that's one of the things that people say, well, and Gary Vaughn said he liked him at the wing. Apologize for it, said he made a mistake. I like him <laughs> as a centerman because he is strong on face-offs. So he gets more involved when he's playing center rather than when he's playing wing. Well, he's been a real prominent figure in this streak. And he'll start this second period. Teams at full strength. Game tied at one. Harding in goal for Minnesota. Roberto Luongo for Vancouver. And here's Kyle Brodziak. Checked at center. Canucks get the puck ahead to Kessler. Is in on the right side. Santarelli going to the net as Kessler whistled one over top of the goal. Hanhuis holds the puck in. Santarelli gets it. Mike Santarelli makes a move out of the corner. Fires to Kessler. He tried to relay to his right for Tanev, broken up by Cook, but Tanev checks him, and Kessler's back into the Minnesota zone. Pass deflects to Higgins. Try to get it down the boards. That was broken up. Puck thrown forward for Cook, and it's icing as Kevin Bieksa wins the race. A long ship for the Wild. The Matt Cook line, and I think Mike Gill might call his time out here. That second period, long change. Nope. No. Sedins after the puck in the corner. Played ahead. Held in by the right foot of Garrison. But now here's Bulmer to the Vancouver line. Long shoot in. Luongo to his knees. Stops it and slides the puck free to Kevin Bieksa. Minute into the second. Hansen tried to get the puck in. Wild turn it the other way. Garrison goes back. Daniel Sedin in the middle. Here's Yannick Hansen. The Canuck goal scorer gains center and flips one in. Gloved by Harding, who faked one way and then elected to hang on to the puck for the whistle. Talked about Josh Harding, his home record. How about Zach Parisi? Got his 15th goal. He's got 12 here. Now, is that because the other teams can key on the maybe one line team when they're on the road? I think that's one of the reasons. 13-3-2 in this building, 6-8-3 on the road of the Wild. Hansen gets the puck to the blue line. Tanev takes a look, wrists one, that deflected wide of the goal. Puck loose on the near side, poked away by Harding. Koivu ahead for Coyle. Charlie Coyle. Finds some room and slides the puck down the right wing boards. Now pursues Tanev and checks him in the corner. Daniel Sedin gets the puck, he'll try the near side. But moving down for the right point is Jonas Brodeen. Coyle. Suter. Wrist one wide. 
Daniel Sedin after the puck. He delays before throwing it across to Hamhuis. Long pass ahead. Hansen missed it, and now the Sedin line has been out there a while. And we'll have to take a defensive zone draw. Before they do that, let's check in with Murph. Well, the guys head down to the other end of the ice. We can tell you the Safeways featured participating product for tonight's game is Christy Crackers. Always good with ranch dip. Oh, yeah? Yeah, very good. Henrik Sedin was 6-0 and in the face-off circle in the first period. He's out there after this icing call. He's 1-0 and this period. Now he's 7-1 and in the Seven hockey game. Points. Keith Ballard to the right point. Wild. Looking to apply some pressure here after the icing. Niederreiter taken down by Tanev. Hulla. Cycles for Niederreiter behind the goal. Pominville, the third member of this forward line. Hoping for that pass, but Daniel Sedin takes it away. Slides one forward at center, and Hansen tips the puck in to facilitate a Vancouver change. Two and a half minutes into the second. A 1-1 tie, and now it's Minnesota's turn to substitute as the Canucks take control in their own zone. Kevin Bieksa looks up ice. Long pass, missed everybody. And another icing call. Brings the face off down into the Vancouver end. Minnesota Wild. As we said, very, very good here at the XL Center. Josh Harding in particular, you get comfortable in your own building as a goaltender and it's always a good thing. Preezy scored in this one as well. Kevin Miexa to David Booth. Back to Miexa and the Canucks break to center. That lead pass for Cassian who's just on side. Stops along the boards. Now cycles down for Brad Richardson. Richardson from behind the net. Tied up by Heatley. Booth is in after the puck. Heatley banked it away from him and sent the puck around for Zenon Kanopka. Kanopka through center. Backhands the puck and Chases in after it on Stanton. Oh, he took him down awkwardly. Feet oh, first. Man. Oh, no. Yeah, man, oh, man. What a That's play. one of those, uh, yeah. Uh, the Canucks react. Zach Cassian comes over and... Stanton has struggled to his feet. His left leg... Uh, Mike Bernstein is out. Ryan Stanton's trying to skate it off. Cassian came over towards Kanopka, but you put a player in such an awful position vulnerable position and Zenon Kanopka just sent him feet first into the boards. Okay. Zenon Kanopka reaches around with both hands and Ryan Stanton. Okay, another look at it. The slow dump in and because Kanopka reaches around and takes his upper body Ryan Stanton is down. He, he loses his balance because Kanopka has got the upper body pulling it back. You know, I'm going to I'm going to back off a little bit from what I saw live. Kanopka was called for tripping. He didn't put the hand on the shoulder, but Stanton seemed to be going down a little bit already. Well, he, you still it, don't want to no. contact somebody in that position. And at the very least, it's a holding penalty. Yeah. And because he is holding the upper body, Ryan Stan's going to stop, so his balance is all on the bottom, and when he gets pulled, Stan goes down. And, and John, I think you'll get a better look at it here. Now he's pulled yeah. backwards, and you can see because that's why Stan loses his balance is because Panaka's right. pulling on his upper body. I, I don't like any sort of play in that position. And hopefully Ryan Stanton is okay. There's a tip by Kessler that goes wide. Here's Hamhuis, Vancouver's power play, 0 for 1 in the hockey game. Long shot, left pad save, Harding. Henrik Sedin hooks the puck to the left point, but Hamhuis had moved to the middle, and the Canucks have to regroup at center. Daniel Sedin, pass for Henrik, off the mark. And the Wild get the puck out, Hamhuis knocked it down with a high stick, and play stops. With a minute 25 to go in the bank of a power play, and the faceoff will come all the way down into the Canucks zone. And you can see John Tortorella is still giving it to uh, Tim Field. Okay, okay. He wants a major, he penalty, wants a major penalty. Tim Peel's going to Sochi, too. He's another one of the seven referees. 
explaining it to John Tortorella. Canucks don't get a major out of it. It's a minor penalty, and they have minute 25 remaining in the Kanopka tripping call. Weber on defense with Kevin Bieksa on the second unit power play. Hanson, Santorelli, Higgins up front. Bieksa finds Hanson in full flight. Down the right side, throws one in front. That hit a skate, came right to Zach Parisi, and he's able to drive the puck down the ice. Bieksa. Hanson tips the puck to the corner. Santorelli goes after it. Wild take the puck away, shovel it forward, and here comes Matt Cook. Gets to the Vancouver line and tips the puck in. Tori Mitchell trying to kill some precious seconds. Cook onto the puck for the Wild. Banks it back into his own zone. And Keith Ballard over to pick up the puck. He's got time and space and wrists it down to the Vancouver line. Knocked down by Brodziak, who tips the puck into the end boards. Now a centering pass for Brodziak is knocked away by Ryan Kessler. 15 seconds to go in the Canuck power play. Henrik Sedin taken down, and the Wild clear again. Garrison goes back with just 10 seconds to go in the Kanopka mark. Here's Dan Hamhuis. Onto the right wing, Kessler drops back. Garrison with some space. Down the left wing, Henrik Sedin in front. Kessler stopped by Harding, who came to his left to make the stop. Vancouver 0 for 2 on the power play. Had one shot with a man advantage, but the opportunity right after was the best. Kessler in front. Here's Kanopka. And he steps into him. Garrison taps the puck to the corner. Heatley there. Back to Ryan Suter. Niederreiter behind the net. Hanhus staying with him. Henrik Sedin comes back for the puck. Gets it ahead to Booth, who's able to tip it into the middle of Ryan Kessler, who finds Jason Garrison. Garrison dumps one in towards Harding and plays the puck the other way. In after it is Zach Cassian. Just past the six-minute mark, second period, a 1-1 tie. Booth battling for the puck behind the Minnesota goal. Brodeen's after it. Cassian moves to check him, but the puck is played to the side to Danny Heatley. Up to center for Suter. And he plays the puck past Chris Tanev. Kevin Bieksa goes back. Dishes near side to David Booth. Booth to Tanev. And he shoots the puck in from the right wing at center. Brian Stanton, I believe, is returning to the Vancouver bench. So that's good news for the Canucks. As Tanev shoots, right pad saved by Harding. And Booth couldn't come up with a rebound. Standing behind the bench right now. Here's Brad Richardson into the corner for Zach Cassian. Richardson trying to dig the puck free as well. Cassian comes out with it in front for Richardson, intercepted by Scandella. And he passes ahead to Parisi, goes rink wide to Spurgeon. Into the middle, Koivu, back for Spurgeon. Wrist shot, stopped on the short side by Luongo. Here's Coyle, sending the puck in behind. Parisi's after it for Minnesota, trying to check Kevin Bieksa. Richardson comes up with the puck and tips it off the glass and out. Jason Garrison, whoa, Canucks, a lot of bodies on the ice. And wild bench and the fans hollering for a too many men penalty, but play goes on. Hulla dumps the puck to the corner. Tanev checks in. Dale Weiss comes up with it. Gets it to the line, and Zach Dalpy able to tie up Ryan Suter to allow the puck to escape the zone. Suter controls in his own end and feeds over to Brodine. Niederreiter takes the bank pass ahead. Luongo comes out to play the puck, gets it around for Tom Sestito. <laughs> Santarelli was trying to move through center. Puck comes through to the goaltender, Harding. And here's Jonas Brodeen. That one got by Weber. Garrison just fires the puck the other way. Higgins did well to trap that one, and he's up ice with a drop pass to Santarelli. Cutting towards the goal, Santarelli shoots, and that one off a skate and wide of the net. Weber moves in deep and plays the puck around for Chris Higgins. Higgins along the end boards to Kessler, trying to come out front. He was checked by Kyle Brodziak. Now Higgins to Santarelli, and Brodziak reached out to knock that pass away. 
Bulmer dumps the puck into the Vancouver zone, and Matt Cook moves in on Weber and rides him into the corner boards. Garrison comes up with the puck. Kessler lost it in his feet. Now he gets another chance. And Ryan Kessler banks the puck to himself before bringing it out to center. Kessler having his stick held, but Weber follows on with a pass to Higgins. Chris Higgins with a wrist shot. Blocker saved by Josh Harding. There's Ryan Stanton, his first shift back, and he holds the puck in, and now he's going right to the bench. It's not working for him. Stanton tried, made a play. And stopped. He tried to stop. And now Mike Bernstein's waving him over. So the Canucks may have to finish this game with five defensemen as Stanton gave it a go. Here's Mike Santarelli intercepting his Brodzia. And Kyle Brodzia passes the puck to center, broken up by Dan Ham. Here's David Booth is in. He's got Hanson in front. Booth centers, and the pass was blocked by Jared Spurgeon. Here's David Booth to the blue line, Bieksa. Left point, Hamhuis. Wrist one towards the goal. A glove saved by Harding as that one came through traffic. Josh Harding able to track it. And there goes Ryan Stanton back to the Vancouver dressing room. During the heyday of the Canucks wild rivalry, if Matt Cook wasn't number one on the hit list with wild fans, he was number two behind Todd Bertuzzi. And for good reason, uh, he had the, a spear on Johnson, a sucker to... Jason Marshall one game breaking his nose. You see he's got as many penalty minutes as he's got against the Rangers in his career versus Minnesota. I asked him yesterday, it took the, uh, the fans a little time here to warm up to him, and he said yes, and I asked him if that was because he was Matt Cook, formerly of the Canucks, or just Matt Cook, and he says, thinks more it's uh, Matt Cook, formerly of the Canucks. <laughs> well, they were asking the coach uh, this morning, Mike Yo, about uh, the biggest rival that the Wild had, and he said it was the Vancouver Canucks, and it, it's Red from playoffs, that playoff series that the Wild had against Vancouver, plus all the bad blood as Murph was reciting. Wasn't Alex Burroughs involved in a hair pulling incident here? No, that, that was, was Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. I'm sure he was involved in an incident here too. <laughs> or, or two. Alex, if you're watching, you'd enjoy this game, <laughs> I think. Canucks lose the puck at their own blue line. Here's Coyle centering, along with the same rebound. Parisi missed it. Tried to chip it in on the back hit, and the net's off. Ham uses down. Parisi there as well, and he looked like he was going to be able to chip that one, but he missed the puck as he was going down. Uh, Roberto Luongo, a nice job to get in front of the second shot so that it wasn't an easy tap in. This ends up being a nice pass by Charlie Coyle, tipped in by Parisi, and he couldn't get the backhand, and Roberto got the body over there so that Parisi couldn't have the easy tap in. That was it. Parisi tried to get under it to get it over Roberto's leg. And missed it. Close call, stays 1-1. We're just past the halfway mark of the second period. Face-off win for the Wild. Suter, wrist shot off the stick of Booth, who checks to make sure it's still intact. Niederreiter plays the puck to the near side. Suter is there. Behind the net, Eric Hulla. To the blue line, Spurgeon, left point. Suter towards the goal, and that hit a body in front of Luongo. Puck thrown to the crease, and it deflects to the far corner. Cassian drops the puck back to Bieksa. He gets it around, and Santarelli can't get it out. Held in by Suter, who read that one well. Ryan Suter's center is knocked away by Luongo. And Booth comes up with the puck and carries it out for Vancouver. David Booth through center with Santarelli, who's taking this shift because Brad Richardson has an equipment problem, had to go to the dressing room. Here's a shot by Weber, and a glove save. Rebound, Booth scores! David Booth parked in front, able to put home the second chance, and the Canucks lead 2-1. Uh, David Booth is playing with that kind of confidence that we didn't see very often. Uh, big goal against Boston Saturday, and this one, guess who he's up against? Ryan Suter in front of the net, and David Booth keeps the stick free. Shot, rebound, Suter's fishing for it, and David Booth kept the stick free, spins around, and gets it before Suter can get it, and slides it by Josh Harding. Good positioning by David Booth, good concentration. And makes no mistake. Harding got a piece of that and hit his goal stick and ramped up into the net. And David Booth has his fifth. Yannick Weber will get another point. It was his shot that Harding did well to stop initially. 
But the Canucks, after being in a little trouble in their own zone, get the puck up ice, and Booth is there for the second opportunity goal. Now the Wild just offside is Brodziak as he took the lead pass from Matt Cook. Whistle blows, 8.46 to go in the second. Booth has the go-ahead goal, and it's 2-1. to one. Check out the Canucks team store for the fan on your list this holiday season. Heritage Classic Collection, perfect for the classic fan. There are gift ideas for the pet lover, executive, or collector on your list too. Visit any of the three team store locations or check out more gift ideas at Canucks.com slash gifts guide. Canucks team store for the player shop. Uh, Shorty, I, I've never seen anybody FaceTime their pet as much as you do with your new dog, Simon. Yeah. So, I mean, there. The gift guide for you, you get stuff for your pets. Do you think that's weird? <laughs> yeah, you get rid of your kids, you talk to them for about two minutes, and then you're talking to the dog for about ten. Kevin Bieksa and Matt Cook were jousting a little bit after the initial face-off that didn't work. And upon the resumption of play, the Canucks worked the puck into the Minnesota end. Here comes Scandella. Beautiful pass ahead to Brodzia. Moving in on Jason Garrison, who broke that up. But the puck stays deep in the Vancouver zone. Brodziak after behind the goal. Knocked away by Bieksa. Comes to Brodziak again. Two Canucks on him. Santarelli takes the body. Or pardon me, Garrison takes the body. Santarelli takes the puck and he gets it out. Here's a steal by Higgins. And tried to send it forward for Santarelli. No icing on this one as Scandella goes back for the puck. Should be Marco and the Scandellas. Don't you think? <laughs> yes. Here's Hendrick Sedin, Canucks with three over the Minnesota line. Daniel to the net, knocked away by Harding. Puck comes to Tory Mitchell, he relays to Danny Heatley. Heatley moving in on Tanev, who knocked the puck away. Heatley keeps after it, slides it to the near boards. Hendrick Sedin, one hand on the stick, just trying to gently poke it around. That didn't work. Tanev being checked by Tory Mitchell. Daniel Sedin goes back for the puck. Heatley's on him, but he gets it ahead to Yannick Hansen. Tied up by... Miko Koivu, who comes up with the puck. Suter. And that pass intercepted by Daniel Sedin, who clears the zone. Just over seven minutes to go in the second. Canucks leading 2-1. to one. Parisi gets the puck by Ham Hughes. Here's Koivu. Goes behind the net. Centers the puck. Blocked by Tanev. Koivu gets it again. Fan on his pass, but he's got it a third time. Holding the line is Brodeen. Puck deflects to Zach Cassian. And he's able to shovel it out to center to Daniel Sedin, who drives the puck in deep. Here's Richardson, trying to hold the puck in the Minnesota zone. Suter makes a move in traffic, gets it ahead, and Coyle drops off to Koivu, who risks the puck into the Vancouver zone. Bieksa reverses for Garrison, up for David Booth, who's got the go-ahead goal. His stick broke as he made that pass, and the Wild come up with the puck and dump it back in. Booth hustles to the bench, grabs a new stick from Pat O'Neill, as Garrison starts from behind the Canuck net. Long pass ahead. Stoner picked that off in front of Zach Cassian. He feeds Pollenville in front. Niederreiter fan on his shot as he tried to get a wrister away. No, 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 no. Zach Cassian with the puck for Vancouver. Hooks one across to Kevin Bieksa, and he backhands the puck into Minnesota territory. Six minutes left in the second. Tom Sestito steals the puck on the forecheck, puts it in front. Quick shot by Weiss. Blocker saved by... Josh Harding, and Niederreiter clears the puck to the line and just out. Played back in by Weber. Brought to center by Nino Niederreiter. He's checked. Keith Ballard collects the puck for the Wild. Over to Clayton Stoner. Flips one forward. Hamhuis missed it. Luongo cuts it off above the goal line and hooks the puck around for Weber, who reverses to Hamhuis. Dan Hamhuis skates to center. Back goes Scandella for that dump in. Leaves the puck for Jared Spurgeon. Ahead for Brodzia. Broken up by Tanev, who brings the puck the other Pardon me, Weber, who brings the puck the other way and tips it into the Minnesota zone. Without Ryan Stanton, we're going to see a lot more of Yannick Weber. And a bunch of different combinations. Cook to Brodzia, just on side as Balmer was able to vacate the zone here. Spurgeon with a shot. Blocker save Loango. Balmer gets the rebound. Brett Balmer. Right point pass, Spurgeon drives one on net, that goes high in the air, and Spurgeon missed it. Higgins collects the puck for Vancouver, and is able to slide it forward to Jason Garrison. 
He tried to get one through for Ryan Kessler. That was broken up, and Ballmer brings the puck back in. Sends it towards the front. Here's Cook, sharp angle shot, stopped by Luongo on the short side. Garrison trying to move the puck ahead. Comes through to Higgins. Trying to shield it along the boards. Four and a half minutes to go in the second. Canucks up two to one. And Minnesota's offside on this play, so that was so close. Later stages, second period. Canucks on the road, first to three. This Sunday on Canucks TV presents a recap of the Canucks Dice and Ice event with Torts and Sarah McLaughlin. We look back at the season so far, the best plays, saves, and milestones. Sunday the 22nd at 9 p.m. and Monday the 23rd at 3 p.m. Only on Sportsnet. David Booth, the go-ahead goal here in the second. Another winner on score and win for Safeway and Christy Crackers. From Maple Ridge, Linda Patterson, you've won a men's bullet of a Marine Star chronograph watch. Good Christmas gift. Uh-huh. You sound like you're a little stressed. <laughs> I am. You're, you're mentioning gifts a lot, oh, like, I know. like you're not I, ready. It's, I am not ready. Puck out of play, deflected off the glass, so just a face-off. If you drive on snow and ice, you don't want all-season tires. You want all-weather tires. Get Nokia's most advanced all-weather tire, the WRG3 at Cal Tire. One of the hottest Canucks, Daniel Sedin. And it's hard now uh, when you got two lines going. And Henrik and Daniel, the, the other team, who do you play Ryan Suter against? The Kessler line or Henrik and Daniel? And uh, it has been both of them. Because Suter played 10-30 in the first period. Here's Matt Cook. Stopping inside the Vancouver Blue Line. Try to wrist shot. And that goes sailing over the glass and the netting and into the seats. Well, now it's time to live the game with windows. If you haven't seen this, you want to have a look. This uh, a few games ago for the Wild, and Charlie Coyle making a young fan's day by just returning a wave. And Coyle uh, didn't know that it was captured on camera. Uh, it went viral. Two million hits now, and they've since contacted the young man and his family. They're going to come to a future game for a meet and greet. So just imagine what he'll be doing then. Live the game with windows. Yes. Here's Keith Ballard. Garrison gets the puck out, Booth ahead to Cassian. He's got Richardson in front, and the pass broken up by Keith Ballard. Richardson would have been in alone on Josh Harding. Parisi the other way. Drop pass, Koivu, to Zach Parisi. Back to Stoner. Here's Parisi to Stoner again. He hooks the puck around, and Koivu missed it. Cassian in a battle with Parisi, now winds up with the puck. Gets it forward for Booth, who lets it go to center, and Cassian's onto it. At least he was going to be. Overskated the puck, but reached back and slid it in deep. Stoner to center. Hanhuis sends the puck the other way, and Sestito tips it in towards Harding, who leaves the puck for Ballard. Along to Pominville, Niederreiter takes his pass and tips the puck into the Vancouver zone. Yannick Weber can't get it by Jason Pominville. Loose puck behind the goal, brought out front quickly. A jam play at the side, and Luongo is there to stop. The Minnesota chance by Hulla. Pominville tried to pass for Eric Hulla. Niederreiter winds up with the puck and dumps it around to the near corner. Dan Hamhuis reverses, that's out of the reach of Weber. Niederreiter for Pominville. Jason Pominville to the blue line. Scandella to Spurgeon. Now Pominville wrists one wide of the goal. Scandella gets the puck on the left wing. Canucks send it around. Again, Scandella's there to hold it in the zone. Good zone time for Minnesota. Canucks able to keep things to the outside for the most part, and now they break to center. Three of them. Delpy leading the way. Zach Delpy with a wrist shot, gloved by Harding, and he'll hang on for the faceoff in the Minnesota zone as Sestito comes together with Niederreiter after the whistle. Niederreiter is one of those aggravating guys to play against, and he's trying to fish Tom Sestito into a penalty here. Gives him a little shot, and he's, he's waiting. A good discipline by Tom Sestito. It's a 2-1 game. You don't want to take a foolish penalty, and showed good discipline there. We got BMO Raptors basketball tomorrow at 3.30 Pacific. Charlotte, Toronto. You can catch all the action on Sportsnet.
Raptors have been playing better lately. Some people think they should tank it and go for the draft pick instead. Here's Chris Higgins cutting inside. Couldn't get a shot through. Puck out to center. BX sends it back in. Under two minutes to go in the second period here. Canucks leading 2-1. to one. Hansen and Parisi traded goals in the first period. David Booth has scored here in the second. Ballmer had Santarelli lined up, but he saw him coming, got out of the way. Tanev ahead to Higgins, and he plays one to the far corner. Kessler there first. Round for Chris Higgins. Steps in front of Ballmer to get that puck. Higgins trying to get away from Brodine. Santarelli's there as well for Vancouver. Higgins doing a good job of keeping control of the puck. Santarelli out of the corner with it. Back to Bieksa. Right point, Tanev. Down for Kessler. He tried to direct one in front. Puck comes to Santarelli. Cycling for Ryan Kessler. Kessler back towards Bieksa, who moves down the left wing boards. Bieksa stops and goes the other way. Rink wide. Tanev slap pass. Deflected in front. Loose and taken away by Ryan Suter as that puck was laying in the crease. Final minute, second period. Canucks two, the wild one. Tanev takes a hard hit from Bulmer as he played the puck around. But he took the hit to make the play. And here's Kessler into the Minnesota zone. Kessler cuts wide right, puts one in front, and Daniel Sedin couldn't get his stick on it. From the blue line, him used to the drive, gloved by Harding, and the whistle blows for a face-off with 36 seconds to go in the period. Kessler line, great zone time, as you were talking about, and then this good scoring chance, the high tip by Chris Higgins. Knocked down in front. Ryan Suter there, Chris Tanev with a good play. Braced himself for the hit. He's getting much better at that. He used to be when he first started so vulnerable all the time. That time he turned the body so that he could take the hit. Wild clear the puck over the head of Yannick Hansen. Garrison cuts it off. Can't get it by Tory Mitchell. Wild trying to set up a late chance. Mitchell down in the corner. Gets up to pick up the puck. Cook sent it through the slot. Here's Brodziak. Behind the net. Mitchell missed the puck. Cook gets it. Slides into the blue line. Spurgeon with a long shot. That didn't get through. Hansen turns back in his own zone. Five seconds to go in the period as he skates the puck to center. And Yannick Hansen will run out of time going after that puck going to the net. He's got a goal in this game. Opened the scoring in the first. And David Booth has restored the Vancouver lead with his fifth. Not a busy period for Roberto Luongo. Faced just seven shots. He's seen 16 through two periods. And it's a one-goal lead for the Canucks with a period to go here in Minnesota. We've got a feature on Canucks assistant coach Mike Sullivan coming up. Don Taylor as well, and he'll be sending it over to the insiders panel. Through two, and the Canucks lead 2-1. Energy Center, the Canucks with a 2-1 lead. Let's take a look at the score and summaries. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Before, during, or after the game, get a fresh Panago. In the first, Yannick Hansen opened the scoring before Parisi tied things up on the power play. Just one goal in the second came from the visitors. It was uh, David Booth with his fifth as a Canucks lead, 2-1. All right, let's check out John Garrett's fresh take brought to you by Subway. Escape the cold with a new Sriracha steak melt. Subway, eat fresh. Last three times Roberto Luongo was in this building, he didn't make it to the end of the second period. Well, great start for Roberto. That save in the first period right away on Zach Parisi where he came across, got the toe on it, felt good about his game, and he is playing as well as he's been playing the last three weeks. Well, really, the entire season. You can pick maybe a couple of games where he didn't get the bounces, but he has been absolutely on fire. Six goals against in his last five games coming into this one. And Luongo with a 2-1 lead heading to the third. Up against Josh Harning is the wild attempt to come back here in the third. 
Well, we got a little time here. A shout out to my brother-in-law, Colin Stafford. He's battling on at the Royal Jubilee Hospital in Victoria. And Jordan Landry and the rest of the staff at the intensive care unit at that hospital doing a great job as always. Underway here in the third with Ryan Shooter chipping the puck around. Brett Ballmer brings it out to center. He flips the puck deep into the Vancouver zone. Bieksa pokes to the corner. Jason Garrison there as the Wild play the puck back to the near side. Ryan Kessler able to pick it up and flip it out. Mike Santarelli checked at the Minnesota blue line. Cook coughs up the puck to Kessler, though. Drop pass. Here's Santarelli down the right side in front. Kessler stopped. Rebound. Higgins stopped as well. Great saves by Josh Harding. Two in a row. Bieksa has the puck in front. Kessler didn't get much of a one-time attempt. Santarelli finds Higgins. All this after a Matt Cook turnover just inside his own blue line. Higgins from the corner. Checked by Brodeen. Kessler's after the puck. Cook battling him. Brodeen gets it ahead and Brodziak chops the puck out. Icing waved off. So Luongo comes out to play it in the corner and leaves for Kevin Bieksa. Now why was that icing waved off? They said it was... I can ask a... Well, the, the signal they gave was that it was a deflected puck that they went off two sticks at the same time, I think. Henrik Sedin tips the puck back in. A minute and a half into the third. Canucks had consecutive great chances. Kessler and Higgins. Foiled by Josh Harding to keep it a one-goal game. Now Koivu sends one ahead. Icing waved off again as Hanhuis goes back. Tanev to Daniel Sedin, rink wide at center, picked off by Spurgeon. Canucks playing with five defensemen in the absence of Ryan Stanton, who was injured in the second period. Here's Marco Scandella. Down the left side, tried a wrist shot, and that's off the stick of Tanev, another play for a whistle. Josh Harding has hurt his goals against average in this game by letting in two. He keeps it at two. Matt Cook brings it back in his own zone, gives it to Ryan Kessler. Kessler shot, save Harding, and then Chris Higgins, just bad luck on that rebound, shoots it off the toe, and they're shaking their head. Robbed in tight in the first two minutes of this third period. Shots are 24 to 16 in favor of the Canucks in the hockey game. <laughs> they only credited one shot to Vancouver in that sequence. They think Higgins shot wide. Pretty clear it went off yes. the left pad, isn't it? Here's David Booth. Tried to get the puck to the side. Wound up turning it over, and back comes Minnesota. Pominville towards the net. That changed direction, went over top of the goal. Hulla to the blue line. Ballard stumbled, but he holds the puck in. Now a wrist shot in front. Luongo steers that to the corner. Looks like he got turned around. Maybe was contacted. Canucks send the puck ahead to Zach Cassian, and he backhands it into the Minnesota zone. Storm to Ballard. Keith Ballard ahead for Kanopka. That deflected off him right through to Luongo. Tips the puck to the corner. Han Hughes works it to Tanev. And now Weiss throws the puck forward. Sestito couldn't knock it down. Dalpy's after it for the Canucks, but it's cleared the other way by the Wild. Ryan Stanton it did not come out for this third period. Tried to take one shift after getting hurt. Immediately went to the bench. And right back to the dressing room. Josh Harding stops the puck behind his goal. Brodeen takes it, spins to the far side. Makes a pass, and here comes Bulmer. Poke checked by Bieksa. Kessler the other way. Dumps one behind the net. Harding steps in front of Santarelli and plays the puck to Brodeen. Suter with possession behind his goal. Ryan Suter delays, sends one forward again. It's Cook turning it over, and the Canucks trying to take advantage, but Suter takes the puck back and gets it out. Bieksa dumps it in the Minnesota zone. This will be icing. Although it looked like Santarelli was maybe going to win that race, and he complains to the linesman that that should have been waved off. Um, I, I agree. Mike Santarelli is, he, he's there. Now, is he at the hash marks before anybody else? I guess Ryan Suter might have been, but Santarelli had a better angle. Uh, and John, here's what you're talking about. There's one shot. Now, is this one going to go in? Yeah, yeah that's going to go in. That's, yes. There's a shot the other end that deflects wide of the Vancouver goal. 
That puck deflects off a of Canuck and out to center. Four minutes into the third. Canucks to the wild one as Spurgeon passes ahead to Parisi. On to the left wing, Koivu. Gets around Henrik Sedin. Gets around Dan Hamhus. Now loses control of the puck behind the net. It comes towards the front and Luongo alertly grabs that one to get the whistle. Murph. John Shoppin, uh, swipe your club card at Safeway today. Watch future sports net telecast, and you could win a week of unlimited luxury at Dreams Resorts and Spas, courtesy of RedTag.ca. Be a nice break. You've got a week off at Christmas. Well, so, oh, so, so for next summer. <laughs> Update from the Canucks on Ryan Stanton is that he's undergoing evaluation. Here's a pass in front, Suter. Knocked away by the Canucks, Yannick Hansen. Skates to neutral ice, backhands the puck into the Minnesota end. Suter around for Spurgeon. Daniel Sedin breaks that up at the Minnesota blue line. Hamhuis has the puck in his own zone, ahead to Henrik Sedin. Rink wide to Daniel, steps in on the right side. Daniel stops, waiting for help. Canucks are changing. Able to keep the puck in the Minnesota zone while the change is happening. Hulla dumps around to the other side. There's Charlie Coyle. And Spurgeon takes his pass and plays the puck out. Hulla went down in a collision with one of the Canucks. Fans react to that as Vancouver ices the puck and the faceoff comes down to the Canuck end. That was a collision with Zach Cassian who was shaking his right leg. John Tortorella is looking on. The fans wanted a penalty, but it was uh, neither player was looking. They just collided at center ice. Wild win the face off. Bodine with a hard shot and missed the net. Pominville hustles to the puck. Garrison takes it away. Finds Cassian, who tips the puck into the Minnesota zone, chases after it. Leg looks okay there. Scandella checked by Richardson. Niederreiter back for the puck. Let Cassian just step in and take it. And now it's Richardson from behind the Minnesota goal. Richardson still with the puck. Three wild players there. Able to knock it away, and Brodine gets it to the line, not out, held in by Garrison. David Booth hustles to the loose puck, makes a move down the right wing. Booth still with it. Cassian takes his pass. And Richardson is open behind the net, comes out front of the backhand. Puck knocked away, and Pominville winds up with it for the wild. Throws a long one that was neatly handled by Tanev, and here he comes the other way. Six minutes into the third. Still 2-1 Canucks as Kanopka backhands the puck forward. Mitchell gets it to the line, knocked down by Dieksa. Ballard is back, tips the puck by Weiss, and it's cleared to the line, gloved down by Tanev. And just outside the line they rule before Sestito brought it back in, so an offside call. The Canucks still nursing a one-goal lead here in St. Paul. Give the Canuck fan on your holiday shopping list the experience of seeing their favorite team play in front of a buzzing crowd of 18,000 strong. Visit Canucks.com slash tickets or drop by the Canucks Ticket Center located at Gate 10 at Rogers Arena to purchase yours today. Well, there you go. The interesting, nation, yes. interesting conversations they must have. Love conquers all, John. Got the Drake Breckle haircut. Here's Ryan Kessler after the puck in the Minnesota zone. Santarelli gets to it. Blue line feed past Garrison, who couldn't trap the bouncing puck. He gets to it first, sends it the other way, and they're saying Higgins didn't touch that one, but the goaltender played the puck, so play continues, and it's Kessler stealing and holding it in the Minnesota zone. It goes off the glass and out of play in the corner. So the faceoff will come outside the Minnesota line as we near the seven-minute mark of the third period, and the Canucks still leading by one. Canucks doing a real good job in the neutral zone taking away and uh, John Tortorella always talks about quick sticks and uh, gap space. The Canucks have done a nice job here in the third period. They still have the Canucks down for just the one shot on goal. Spurgeon, a couple of moves, trying to get around Hamhuis who reached back to knock the puck away. Finds Tanev in the corner, who neatly kicked that one up to a stick. Now it's behind the defenseman's shooter, and here comes Daniel Sedin. In on Harding. Stopped by Harding. 
closed the door. Daniel trying to go between the legs, and another key stop for Josh Harding. Well, that's three here in the third period in the first six minutes and 58 seconds for Josh Harding. Nice play, and uh, Daniel Sedin's got the breakaway in behind Ryan Suter, and as you said, John, tried to go five hole, and Harding read it really well. And you can see Daniel look around. There's no chance as Harding closed that space real early on that one. Daniel with 14 points in his last 12 games. And that came right after a six-game point drought. So he's turned it around nicely, but foiled there in his attempt to give the Canucks a 3-1 advantage. Had an assist on the Yannick Hansen goal in the first period. Oh, there you go. So make it 15 points in his last 13 games. Jared Spurgeon. That's broken up, and back comes Zach Cassian, one-on-one -on, -one on Suter. Cassian tried to wrist shot block, gets it back, shoots. Left pad saved by Harding. Suter turns with a puck deep in his own zone. Played out, BX over to get it at his own blue line. And Cassian takes that pass. Hammers the puck into the Minnesota zone. Harding got a piece of it. Keith Ballard there to pick it up. Puck shot back in by Garrison from center. And here's Stoner. Couldn't get it by Bieksa, and he forces Minnesota all the way back again. Little over eight minutes gone in the third. Higgins, almost a chance to steal that one and move in, but the Wild dump the puck down into the Vancouver zone, and Luongo will take the whistle for the faceoff in the Vancouver end. Talking about quick sticks, the Canucks, Brad Richardson at the blue line. Everybody standing up. Brad Richardson chips it up to Zach Cassian, who then goes down and has a good chance on Josh Harden. Remember how we talked about anything you can hang your hat on? The Canucks had that tough home stand, just one win in six, and they went out on the road and turned the page on the calendar. Haven't lost since. It's amazing how it goes where they, you play pretty well and you can't buy a goal and then you play a game like the Boston game where the guy takes a shot from center ice, it's off a stick, dips about two feet, <laughs> and it goes in. Here's Koivu with room on the left wing. Preezy going to that, pass comes across, Coyle scores! Canucks have given up nothing. But it's Coyle open on the right side, tying the game at two. Well, the long pass to create a three on two. And you can see they're trying to come back. Coyle on Roberto Luongo just squeaks it through. Roberto didn't get over as quickly as he wanted to. Kind of double clutched on it and it just squeaks through. Second assist of the hockey game for Miko Koivu. And now what do you think of the saves by Josh Harding here early in the third? Coil at 847, and it's anybody's hockey game again. It's for the second time the Wild have come back to tie. Assist number nine, Miko Coil, and number 25, Jonas Harding. David Booth after the puck in the Minnesota zone. Wild get it ahead, and here's Hull. Couldn't get it by Garrison at center, quickly ahead to Booth. Right up the middle, try to drop pass, and Scandella winds up with the puck. Coil from Koivu and Brodine at 8.47. And here's Niederreiter chasing after a puck in the Vancouver end. Weber ties him up. Garrison gets the puck. Canucks play it out. Suter controls just inside his own blue line. Pass ahead, and here's Tori Mitchell in. Drops off. Palmer tried a shot. And that deflected to the corner. Here's Kanopka. Ballmer taking Danny Heatley's place on this line jump. As Daniel Sedin works the puck out with a pass to Yannick Hansen. He sends one in on Harding, who passes the puck to the sideboards. Henrik Sedin after it there, played by him and out to center. Past the halfway mark, third period. Bieksa reacts as Ballmer appeared to hang a leg on him at center. 
Kevin be accident like that. Now he's back into the play and defending. Here's Heatley out on a line with Cook and Brodziak. So Heatley and Balmer switching spots. Centering pass. Luongo knocked it away as Heatley took a swipe at the puck. Now a long shot from the line. Knocked away. Tanev able to steer it to Mike Santarelli. And he gets to center on the right wing before playing the puck in behind the Minnesota goal. Harding gets it to Heatley. Ahead to Matt Cook. His pass off his skate. Another turnover. And here's Santarelli on the left side. Mike Santarelli looking in front. Pass out of the reach of Higgins who takes the puck on the ricochet. Puts it in front. Lose Santarelli. Stopped by the goaltender. Now Higgins trying to bank it in. And Harding grabs the puck. First the stop on Santarelli. And then Harding able to avoid the ricochet off his own body. Trap the puck and hang on. As the Canucks came close to taking their third lead of the game. The first time ever the Canucks will be a part of the Heritage Classic. Senators versus Canucks, March 2nd. BC Place tickets on sale now. And Heritage jerseys can be purchased now at select retail outlets. Again, save on Mike Santarelli through a maze. And then Chris Higgins tried to bank it off the pads. And Josh Harding alertly squeezes it. Face-off win for the Canucks. Yannick Hansen into the corner for Daniel Sabine. Henrik Sedin checked by Miko Koivu. Puck comes free to Charlie Coyle. And he, from center, is able to dump it into the Vancouver zone. Ham Hughes from behind the net. Wild take the puck back. Tanev gets to it in front of Parisi. Clearing attempt held in by Spurgeon. But now Yannick Hansen brings the puck to center and wrists it off a Minnesota stick and off the end glass. Here's Ryan Suter. Gets to center, rings the puck around. Canucks clear it ahead. Higgins trying to move out. He's checked. Puck comes right in front. Knocked away to Santarelli, who passes to Ryan Kessler. Back to Mike Santarelli. Left wing feed out of the reach of Higgins. He moves in to pressure Jonas Brodeen. Higgins comes up with a puck in the corner. Gets a return pass from Santarelli. Hullock grabbed onto Higgins momentarily. Play goes on. Scandella digs the puck out. Pressured by Kessler, who knocks it away from him. Comes free to Pominville. He's checked by Higgins, but gets the puck out. Bieksa tried to one-hand it away. Now it's sent forward, and here comes Kessler to the Minnesota line. Stick lifted from behind by Niederreiter. And Hullo plays the puck down into the Vancouver end. Stoner intercepts the lead feed and backhands the puck to center for Bulmer. Tied up by Richardson. Cassian there as well for Vancouver. Kanopka digging for the puck. It's Bulmer keeps it along the boards. Cassian able to come up with it. Backhand in the Minnesota zone. Stoner just gets it by Richardson and here come the Wild. Kanopka to the backhand. Missed the net. And the net has been dislodged, so the whistle blows, and they'll say the faceoff comes outside the zone. Perth. John, check out NHL Week Ahead on sportsnet.ca to read reviews and previews, players to watch, and games in the coming week. Well, Zenit Konopka draws a crowd. Brad Richardson, a few words. That goes to the Ryan Stanton injury, I'm sure. Face-off comes outside the Vancouver blue line with just under seven minutes to go in the third period. Face-off came outside because Kanopka rammed Danny Andrews into the crossbar and he pushed it off. Henrik Sedin wins the draw. It was 10 out of 13 after two periods. 12 out of 18 now. 12 out of 18. Here's Matt Cook from Minnesota. Heatley takes his pass. Wrist shot, Luongo juggled it. He was able to grab it as Cook was trying to swap that puck in the midair. Danny Heatley hasn't played much, only six minutes after two periods. Takes his shot from the boards. Looking for a rebound, Roberto takes it off his chest. Bobbled it a little bit, but before Cook could get there, hangs on. And then 
Heatley is taken off as an offensive zone faceoff. Danny Heatley has averaged nine minutes the last three games. Morning skate, he's the second last guy on the ice. Leaves the ice before everybody else except the starting goalie. Dedication, stay in shape, you're not playing much. Certainly not from the manual of how to get back in the no. coach's good graces. No. Charlie Coyle missed that pass, but Tanev's pass intercepted by Koivu. Parisi, the blue line to Suter. Koivu makes a move behind the net, sends the puck the other way. That winds up on the stick of Chris Higgins, who gets to center and plays the puck over the Minnesota blue line. Suter waiting behind his net, now starts out. Ryan Suter. Find some room at center. Banks the puck into Vancouver territory. Garrison goes back. Chips the puck along for Mike Santarelli. Pass ahead. A perfect one to Daniel Sedin. Drop feed. Kessler. Blue line pass. Garrison with a shot. Stopped by Harding. Kessler holds the puck in. Santarelli cuts in front with a wrist shot attempt. And that one deflected out of play by Jonas Brodeen. Was that a line juggle or was that just in between shifts the Sabines apart? Still a tie game. Let's check out the game summary brought to you by The Brick. Nobody beats The Brick for furniture, mattresses, appliances, and big screen TVs. Yannick Hansen playing with Henrik and Daniel Sedin. They looked really good in the first period on a three-way passing play. Hansen finishing. Zach Freezy, 12 of his 15 at home. And Roberto Luongo, very good up until that Charlie Coyle one just squeaked through. Sedin's on the ice together as we return to XL Energy Center. Matt Cook able to tip the puck in to the Vancouver zone. Tanev circles his net and starts out flipping the puck into Minnesota territory. Spurgeon controls and dumps one ahead for Matt Cook. Deflected off him right to a teammate. Henrik Sedin gets the puck at center. Cutting that one off is Ryan Suter. Heatley has room on the right wing. Dumps the puck around behind the goal. Tanev sends it the other way. And Henrik Sedin passes ahead right to Daniel. Hansen on the right wing. Drop pass to Daniel Sedin. Puts one in front and Suter knocked that one away. Heatley with the puck. Pass rink wide to Spurgeon who's over the Vancouver line. Puck comes free to Cook. Wrist shot, Luongo to his knees made the save. Under five minutes to go, a 2-2 tie. Ryan Kessler flips the puck out. Scandella goes back, being watched by Chris Higgins. Bank pass to Charlie Coyle, who has the equalizing goal here in the third. He finds Parisi across, Koivu, and Luongo with a blocker made the save. Scandella holds the puck in, Coyle cuts in front. Over to Koivu again, centering pass, and Parisi couldn't knock it home. A couple of close calls for the Wild, who've never led. Four minutes to go. Scandella starts from behind his own goal. Parisi takes the pass. In over the Vancouver line. Coyle did well to control that one. Oh, it came through a pile and changed direction, I think, and Luongo got the left pad on the puck. Here's Tanev with a good burst to center. Drop pass. Cassian towards the net. That missed. Puck ricochets to Niederreiter. Here he comes. He's got Pominville who takes the pass on the left wing. Jason Pominville to the crease. Knocked away by Hamhus. Hulla from behind the goal. Eric Hulla. Shielding the puck away from Tanev. Hamhus spread that one well. But he's hitting the corner. Puck thrown on goal and Luongo through the screen of his own defenseman able to pick it up and cover it up. Canucks Hockey on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Subway. Escape the cold with our new Sriracha Steak Melt. Subway. Eat fresh. Mike Jones loaded up the line with Charlie Coyle, Parisi, and Koivu. They get a great scoring chance again. And Zach Parisi, a good tip by Roberto Luongo. He got that stick out there and able to tip that by Zach Parisi. Suter with a shot off the draw. And that missed the net by a healthy margin. 
Spurgeon holds it in. Hulla from the corner. Steps around Bieksa. Garrison over to check him. Pominville holds the puck in the Vancouver zone. Three minutes to go in the third period. A 2-2 tie. Niederreiter threw a hit on Bieksa, but the Canucks come up with a puck and get it outside the line. Here's Ryan Suter. Up to Jared Spurgeon. Drop pass. Now Spurgeon in front. And Niederreiter couldn't knock that one home. Kessler and Pominville came together on the far side of the ice. Garrison. Canucks having trouble getting out of their own zone. Minnesota. Ratching it up. Here's Matt Cook. Spinning with a shot attempt. And that didn't get through. Kessler clears to the line. Knocked down by Scandella. Puck finally out to center. Santarelli was spilled. He's back on his feet. And Scandella has the puck for the wild. Fans are enjoying this late surge from the home team. And they've had lots to enjoy in the home games this year. Tanev gloves the puck down at his own line. Up to Daniel Sedin. He rings the puck around to the near side. Tanev waiting at the right point. Quickly across. Hamhus down low for Daniel Sedin. That one off the end glass. Hansen kicks the puck to the corner. Goes after it there on Kyle Brodziak. Under two minutes to go in the third. Scandella digs the puck out of the crown, banks it to Heatley, and he's able to tip the puck down inside the Vancouver blue line. Daniel Sedin takes a long pass and heads to the bench after tipping the puck into the Minnesota zone. Harding out of his net, puck into the corner, Suter, Parisi, and here's Coyle. Tips the puck back, the X skates onto it, Rashad gloves, save Loongo. Charlie Coyle with a dash down the left side and a chance for his second of the period. A good save by Roberto Wongo, got square to Charlie Coyle. Butterfly, glove open. And makes no mistake. Kevin Bieksa couldn't hold up Charlie Coyle or he would have taken the interference penalty. Coyle a right hand shot down the left side. Road trip continues Thursday in Dallas. We're on the air with our coverage at 5 p.m. Pacific. And a timeout call here with a minute 26 to go in the third period. Each team with a couple of goals. Canucks twice taking the lead, and here's how they all look. Oh, uh, the rush, the three-way passing play, Daniel Sedin to Yannick Hansen, he finishes. Great wrist shot just inside the post. Beautiful pass on the power play, Zach easy. Makes it count on a pass from Ryan Suter, and then David Booth fights Suter off to get the rebound on that play, and then Charlie Coyle just squeaks one through. You think back to that Brent Burns trade and Devin Santaguchi who had those great scoring years in San Jose. Charlie Coyle was the prize. Yeah, highly touted junior. Brent Burns has played very well for San Jose, but Coyle, what potential. That was just his second goal in the last 16 games. But it's a big one at the moment. With just under a minute and a half to go on a face-off in the Vancouver zone. Koivu against Kessler. Kessler went down. Puck is underneath him. Squirts free towards Suter. He tips it to the far side. Hamus there in a good battle with Parisi. And the puck comes free to Tanev. He flips it to the Minnesota blue line. Gloved down by Spurgeon. Suter for Coyle. That's over his stick. Hamus checked by Parisi but gets the puck to Tanev. A hit for Santarelli just out of his reach, and Suter takes the puck for Minnesota. We're into the final minute of the third period, a 2-2 tie. Coyle heads to the bench after dumping the puck in. Tanev to Hamhus. Santarelli digs that out of his feet, flips the puck forward. Kessler's on it in the Minnesota line, trying to go through to the defense. And up with the puck is Jared Spurgeon. Quick shift to get around Daniel Sedin. Now a pass on the right wing. Pominville with a drive, and Luongo blockers that one over the glass for a whistle with 35.3 seconds left. Long pass. Roberto Luongo set early on that long shot, able to handle it easily. Niederreiter is still trying to draw a penalty. He's talking to Kevin Bieksa. The Wild leave on a four game trip after this one. Another homecoming. For Matt Cook. Yes, he can play in Pittsburgh next. 
This one very much in doubt, a tie game. Under 30 seconds to go as the Canucks clear the puck out. Suter plays it forward, right to Brad Richardson, who's down the left side. Pardon me, that was Grodin who played it out, and now he's just got the puck behind the net. Round for Niederreiter, pressured by Bieksa. Puck out to center, Garrison has it for Vancouver. 12 seconds to go. One last rush for the Canucks. Hansen trying to move in. Yannick Hansen dumps the puck around to the far corner. Henrik Sedin is there. Under five seconds to go, and this one will indeed go beyond 60 minutes. Roberto Luongo and Josh Harding nodded at two through 60 minutes, and Harding made some key saves early, allowing Charlie Coyle to get the game-tying goal at 8.47 of the third period. Well, those saves on Ryan Kessler and Chris Higgins in the first two minutes of the third period by Josh Harding. Unbelievable, and then Daniel Sedin with a breakaway. And Harding made the save on him. Guys, it's been a couple of years since these two teams went to overtime. Who won it? Let's have a look. Kessler carries back in. Counts on a four on three power play in overtime. 25 seconds left. Salo lets it go. He's got it. Salo ripped it. And the Canucks win 3 2 in overtime. Well, they got another number six in the blast the puck, John, and Yannick Weber. See if he sees some time in overtime, but Sammy Salah was the hero on that night. Danny Heatley in the penalty box on that one. Canucks 5-2 and two in games decided in overtime this season. Chris Higgins, their latest hero, as he potted the winner. He'll start this one on the bench. Mike Santarelli has a couple of the Vancouver overtime goals this season. Minnesota Wild. All their wins have come in shootouts. They're 0-1 in games decided in overtime. And that was the second game of the season they lost to Anaheim in overtime. So. So they, this is the 10th time they've been beyond 60 minutes, but only one of them decided in the five-minute period. Koivu wins the overtime faceoff. Suter has the puck. And he's going to rush it out for Minnesota. Tips the puck past Tanev, goes after it himself, a determined Ryan Suter to begin overtime here. Suter centers, Koivu missed the net! What a chance! Might have gone off Tanev, but Koivu looked like he had the game won right there. Canucks dodge that bullet. Now they've got Bieksa in on the left wing. Kevin Bieksa with a wrist shot, that missed. Henrik Sedin being checked along the boards, but gets the puck in behind the net. Suter's there, tipping it by Daniel Sedin and onto the stick of Zach Parisi. Koivu to Parisi, cuts inside, Parisi shoots over top of the goal. Bieksa missed it, and Koivu with a weak shot of a rolling puck that went off the side of the net. Minute gone in overtime. And Higgins is onto the ice with Ryan Kessler. Higgins tried to drop for Bieksa, had to slow to take the pass. Now he feeds Higgins again, who's through center on the right wing into the Minnesota zone. Higgins slows. In front, Kessler stopped by the right pad of Harding. Kessler didn't get all of it, but he got a pretty good shot away. And Harding had to make the save. Now a centering feed for Scandella. Luongo stopped him. Then got the rebound as well as Coyle on the backhand tried to end the game. Frantic action and some chances at both ends here in OT. It's almost like an out-of-conference game. But that extra point is valuable when you look at the standings. Yes. Could mean a huge amount if these two teams are locked in a playoff battle. Here's Hamhuis, stopped by Harding, who hey, thought he held on. But the play continues with Hamhuis still after the puck. He's checked, and now Minnesota will try to break out. Two of them, and a two-on-one. It's Brodziak to the net. Luongo got his right arm on the shot. Brodziak gets the puck again. Kyle Brodziak to the blue line. Spurgeon, left side, Suter. Ryan Suter trying to step around Ryan Kessler. Suter works his way to the end board. Still has the puck as he skates to the corner. Fires back to Spurgeon. Fakes the shot. Passes down. Gets a return feed. Knocked away. Here's Suter with room. Kessler out to meet him. Suter to Hulla. And he drilled that one over top of the net. 
Canucks need a change. Weber might be able to help provide one as he gets the puck ahead to Higgins, who plays it gently into the Minnesota zone. Boy, Roberto Luongo made three great saves here in overtime. Suter has the puck. Passes to Marco Scandella. Up for Koivu. Tips it into the middle for Parisi. Working on Jason Garrison. He takes him to the corner boards. Parisi along for Koivu. Up front of the backhand. That went through the crease and onto the stick of Garrison. Quickly ahead to Yannick Hansen. Three Canucks over the Minnesota line. Hansen down the left side. Hansen shoots. And that whistled over top of the goal. Bieksa trying to hold the puck into the right point. Koivu tipped it past him. Fans react as Bieksa reached back to check the Minnesota captain. Under two minutes to go in overtime. And Brodine passes to Scandella. Sedin's on the ice for Vancouver. It's Coyle and Pominville up front for the Wild. Henrik disrupted that pass, but Scandella gets the puck. Almost put it over the glass, but it stayed in play. Daniel Sedin, beautiful drop pass. Hamhuis over the Minnesota line. And his slap shot is off a wild stick and sails into the seats behind Josh Harden. Well, the Wild have just everybody involved now. Ryan Suter goes in deep, throws it out in front, and well, I think that did hit the shoulder of Chris Tanev in tight. And then Roberto Luongo comes across, has no idea where it is. Off the blocker on Scandella. And then another wild chance on the wrist shot by Brodziak. And a good save by Roberto Luongo on that one. Minute 19, remaining in overtime if it goes the distance. And Suter winds up with the puck in his own zone. Here's Brodziak. Tips the puck in behind the goal. Good job by Garrison to come up with it there. Gets it to the line, not out. Kessler trying to steal, and he does. Ryan Kessler through center with Chris Higgins. Kessler over the Minnesota line. Tries a drop pass. Higgins was after the puck. Wild able to tip it to the side. With under a minute to go in overtime. Brodziak passes. Intercepted. Higgins fan on his shot attempt. And Shooter winds up with the puck. Quickly ahead to Pominville. Moving in on BX. Shoots. And a glove saved by Luongo who hangs on with 44 seconds to go in sudden death. Jason Pominville with the long pass. Canucks changing. Kevin Bieksa just coming on the ice. Make sure that Pominville has to shoot from long range. Ryan Suter is up over 31 minutes as Pominville ponders what might have been. And the Canucks timeout call. Minnesota oh, pardon me, it's Minnesota's timeout. Canucks took the Canucks earlier one. Canucks already had their timeout. Canucks have a player who's going to go over 30 minutes too. In fact, Dan Hamhuis just has. 30 minutes and 2 seconds for Hamhuis. Vancouver playing for the last half of the hockey game with just five defensemen with Ryan Stanton injured in the second period. Well, you can bet Mike Yo wants to get Parisi and Koivu back out there again. Ryan Suter, uh, <laughs> over 31 minutes. He, he needs a little rest. He's talking things over. Well, if you're Mike... Well, I guess you wouldn't take the chance. You go to the shootout. Would you put Charlie Coyle? Would you have three forwards and Ryan Suter? Like right now? Like right now with 44 seconds left. No. No. No, I think that's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking out loud. Yes. Koivu will take the face off against Brad Richardson. Mark Wheeler making sure everything's above board. Puck comes to Tanev, who skates it back, dumps it around for Henrik Sedin. Richardson will likely head to the bench and allow Daniel Sedin to jump over the boards and join his brother, which he does. And here's Hamhuis up to Henrik. Daniel's on his left, takes the pass. Daniel drags inside, poke check. Hamhuis on the rebound, stopped by Harding. Daniel hit the side of the net as he dove and swatted that puck towards the goal. Couple of good chances there, but the game continues. Under 20 seconds to go as Koivu moves in. Spurgeon's deep, trying to center for Parisi. It was open, but the pass was blocked. Spurgeon keeps after the puck. Parisi takes the pass behind the goal. Centers for Suter, puts it on the backhand, and that shot went off a leg and wide. Here's Parisi, wraparound attempt, never got it out front. Chance for Spurgeon off the heel of his stick. 
and overtime comes to an end with both teams having great chances to end it but Harding and Luongo making it through 65 minutes uh, here's the chance Daniel Sedin told Rag doesn't get it by but Dan Hamus follows the play and then the rebound goes wide and you can see the bench they thought that Dan Hamus' chance was the chance to end it well, John, it's been a while since the Vancouver Canucks and Minnesota Wild went to a shootout. For the amount of times they've played, it's hard to believe. It was 2008, Valentine's Day. Look who was playing. Trevor Linden wristing that one in. Scoring, but this man, Miko Koivu, able to end it. And Minnesota won 5-4 that night at Rogers Arena. Well, Miko Koivu, he's deadly in the shootouts. And yet, he's not known as a goal scorer. He's known more as a a uh, passing playmaking guy and uh, yet in the shootouts he is very good he's tied with Sidney Crosby for the most game deciding goals in shootouts with 14 in his career meanwhile the Canucks this season have struggled in the shootouts scoring they've only scored twice in shootouts this season and here's the two goals they've scored Mike Santarelli goes forehand and snaps it by Corey Schneider and then Alex Burrows a couple of dipsy doodles and Puts it away on Mike Smith. Mike Santarelli, certainly a candidate to go in this one. Len Goldson talking it over with him. As we said, it was a two-point gap in the standings between Santarelli's Canucks, who had 45 points. They're up to 46. Minnesota's up to 44. And this extra point determines whether it's a one-point difference in the standings or a three-point difference in the standings, and that could be huge in the coming months. Well, in the Pacific Division, too, everybody just keeps on winning. San Jose winning, Anaheim winning, Los Angeles is playing Edmonton later. Chances are they'll win. <laughs> It'll be Zach Parise, Miko Koivu, and Jason Pominville for the Minnesota Wild. Canucks will go with Mike Santarelli, Chris Higgins, and Ryan Kessler. Minnesota with the option and will shoot first. But the Canucks with just the one shootout victory jump and it's the shooters, really. you got to be honest about it. As we mentioned, just two goals on the season That's in right. shootouts. Luongo stopped 10 of 14, and he's 1 in 3. It's got to be a little frustrating. Well, the Winnipeg Jets are really good in shootouts. And the reason is that it's not their goaltending so much as they score 2 out of 3 every shootout. We wait for the ice to be scraped, and they don't like the way it was done. And they're going to they have to turn a, they around. They missed a spot. Amazingly, they, they missed a spot at the end where the Wild are going to shoot. I mean, if you're yes, going to miss a spot, yes, you expect it to be at the, at the end. other end. Remember the old Billy Smith rule? Remember how in overtimes you had to switch ends? And Billy Smith used to cut up the crease and, and pound his skates in the crease. And you'd go down there for the overtime. And it was like skating on train tracks. <laughs> so they finally made it so that the goalies didn't switch ends for the overtimes. All right, we're just about set for the shootout. And after that, you will see episode 1, 24-7, Road to the Winter Classic in its entirety. The Red Wings and the Maple Leafs will be squaring off January 1st. And Sportsnet's the home of 24-7, Road to the Winter Classic. So stay tuned for that, but the shootout is first. And Zach Parisi will go up against Roberto Luongo to kick things off. Shooting first for the wild. Number 11, Zach Minnesota Parisi. won its last game in a shootout in Colorado. That was a 2-1 final. This one will end 3-2. Which way? We're about to find out as Parisi moves in on Luongo. And Luongo held the right pad out to stop him on the deep to the forehand. Uh, it almost looked like Parise changed his mind. It looked like he was going to go five hole. Fakes the shot, and then by the time he 
decides, okay, I'm gonna deke. He's almost by the net. Roberto Luongo stretches out, uses those long legs, able to get the toe on it. Mike Santarelli has a chance to put the Canucks up as he leads it off against Josh Harding. And I think that hit the crossbar. Good move by Mike Santarelli, and it looked like the same move that he used in New Jersey against Corey Schneider. Forehand, fake go forehand, try and go high, and he did go high off the crossbar. He had Josh Harding beaten in the post. And actually been played by that. Higgins has done it a couple of times. He'll shoot next, but first here's Miko Koivu in on Loongo. And he hit the crossbar. Fans down there thought it went in. It made and now the... they're talking it over. They're probably going to go and look at it. Do you think it went in? It didn't make that back bar sound. I didn't no. think. And Miko Koivu pull it to the back end. No. Underside Cross of the bar. bar. Underside of the crossbar. I agree with you. It had that good hard woo. And Roberto got lucky that he didn't drag it in off his pad. They'll have a look it, at it. It had the good sound. Had the goalie sound. The goalie sound. Play is under of course, when I played goal, they couldn't raise the puck, so yes. I never heard yeah, that you sound. You didn't have to worry about that. That had the goalie sound too. They'll confirm what you've already seen. As Greg Kimmerly gets on the horn to Toronto, we'll take one more look from the other side. There's Miko Koivu, right underneath the bar, comes down, hits the bottom of the post, and stays out. So back-to-back -back crossbar, Santarelli for the Canucks. And Koivu's was even closer to going in, going off the underside of the bar, and we'll get the official word from Greg Kimmerly. After review, the puck did not cross the line, therefore we have no goal. And Roberto Luongo breathes a sigh of relief, although I'm sure he knew the way it came out and the way it sounded. That wasn't it. So the Canucks still stuck on two shootout goals on the season. Higgins will provide their 18th attempt in off the left. Stopped by Harding. And we're scoreless through two rounds. Now Chris Higgins tries to get Josh Harding to move faster across the side, from side to side, and Harding doesn't. Harding stays right with him, stays, and doesn't give him anything to shoot at. Jason Pominville moving in on Luongo. Scores! Jason Pominville pulls it in and then goes high glove side. Roberto Luongo looks like he thinks he's going to go five hole. Squeezes the pads and you can see Roberto's reaction and the reaction of the wild bench. Ryan Kessler must score, or that man will be the hero. Kessler looking to keep the game going. Harding out to challenge. Kessler shot it wide, and Minnesota wins. Well, Josh Harding. Those saves early in the third period and here in the shootout, the Canucks can't beat them. And Ryan Kessler tries to go blocker side, misses the net. Fakes, gets Harding to commit to the five hole shot. He had some room, but just missed the net. Josh Harding was injured at the morning skate, took a puck in the throat. But he was excellent in this one, allowing Jason Pominville to be the hero in the shootout. Charlie Coyle got them there with the third period goal, and the Wild improved to 14-3-2 in this building. Josh Harding is 14-1 at home. And the Canucks see their winning streak end at 7. They do get a point. They're 7-0-1 in their last 8, but they're denied an 8th consecutive victory for the first time since January of 2011. Game one of the road trip goes to Minnesota. 3-2 the final in a shootout. So thank you for the Canucks.